Afternoon all. Welcome to Grandad's allotment. Uh, it's the 6th of June today and I uh, thought I'd just uh, let you have a little bit of a look around and see what, uh, what's going on. Um, just up doing a bit of watering so I'll, uh, I'll show you around. So let's start in the, the big greenhouse. I'll start here first actually. The apples and fruit area are doing really well. Cherry tree. Got loads of cherries on. And the apples, I'm actually quite impressed with the apples this year. They all have set quite a bit of fruit. This is the sporting apple. Uh, and these are, are the ones I am. Um, I pollinated, I don't know if you can see over there for the sun, but that's the conference pear. And that's got pears on. And over here, the other apple tree. Again, got loads of apples set. Uh, we will get some drop, that's not a problem. Right, into the, the big greenhouse. Now, apple tree in here. I don't know if you can see, it's, uh, it's shooting up again. Thought I'd lost this, uh, but it is shooting up. I'm gonna have to take some of this greenery back because I don't need all of this greenery in the greenhouse, basically. But that'll come, come back. Don't see any fruit on this one as of yet. But this one, potentially a few bits. But there wasn't many flowers in here and this did get cut right right back so probably lost a, a year's worth oh there's one there probably lost a year's worth of uh of fruit on this because of how hard i cut it back but that's that's not a problem uh, but i am going to cut a lot of this green back again uh, the fig tree you can see but that's again took off. Um, I can't see it setting any new fruit yet but there's still that one on there from last year. And now I've got my tomatoes in. Um, got them set in the middle as well. Raspberries, these are up and nearly finished with the staging along here now so this will all come out and then i'll get uh, the tomato plants in along the bottom still got a few uh, things to sort um i did lose a load of stuff i, I went away uh, for a fortnight and i couldn't get up the water stuff so i lost a load of these flowers um just flocks and stuff but um, I did manage to keep revive these. This is the love lies bleeding and stuff, and some borage. Uh, other stuff I've got to go out. More beans, really. Um, this is the uh, achocha bean. More climbing beans. A few sunflowers, and that's about it, really. To go out, some fuchsias there uh, for hanging baskets, but the rest is my tomatoes. Um, a few lots. Yeah. Onions and leeks, I'll have to get them out soon. Um, but these, this lot, these tomatoes um, and stuff are for in the bottom along here and under, in the other greenhouses. So let's have a look outside, see where we're at. We'll start up here. So in here, we've got. Um, I think it's the Romanesco um, cauliflower and some celeriac. A little bit of spinach in that bed there. Strawberries are, are doing well, all uh, setting fruit now. You can see, all setting fruit. The bulbs, spring bulbs, are all cut back. There's a few alliums come up, and um, the rosemary in the corners are starting to bulk up now. Middle bed here, peas and beans. Uh, I think these are 
French climbing beans. Uh, so are they dwarf French beans? I think they're um, Colorado. I think they are. Comfrey. I've harvested all of that. It was up, up the height. Um, I'll show you the, the what I've done with it. Um, all the spring bulbs are being cleared out of these beds, um, and Grandma and Grandad's roses there are, are taken off. This is the um, the Japanese wineberry, um, which I transported from uh, the house, uh, which is now taken off. I thought I'd lost that, but you can see I've got some quite new new uh, foliage there. So I'm going to train that up up this back wall here. Uh, a few shares are starting to, to, to build up now um, and I've cut all the um, daffodils and stuff back. Broad beans are up, starting to set fruit. Um, normally I would sow them in sort of October, November time, but I did them in spring this time. So there we are a little, a little further back than what I would like. Um, courgettes and a mara in the middle, stripy mara. Um, and then a few beans, uh, sorry, peas, um, the Hearst green shaft. Strawberry bed, this is all um, new strawberries for this year. So uh, they're off last year's cuttings, um, last year's runners. So it's sort of second year for them, or new first year. Last year's overwinter and onions are, are starting to bulk up now. They'll, they'll be coming out soon. So end of June, begin of July. Same with the garlic, hopefully. Um, I need it to sort of finish really, so I've got the beds back. Uh, in here, we've got um, more cauliflowers and some uh, sprouting broccoli. In here, we've got dwarf French beans again uh, in the middle and they're bellotti. Up a lot of again some um, celeriac and a couple of what are these rainbow no Romanesco collie on the bean cage we've got my runner beans coming up um, along along here and they're Guinness world record runner beans grow them every year. Um, potatoes are doing well they're all coming up funny enough the, the potato I'll show you in a minute the potatoes that was in the uh, greenhouse to start off early didn't come up early um, in fact half of them haven't come up at all the transplanted um, currants from the fruit cages they're all doing up well obviously they're probably not fruit this year but I will next year and a few alliums stuck in the back there as well so yeah, this is uh, the garlic. That's not, I kind of feel it, but starting to bulk up now anyway. Uh, they'll need to come out fairly soon, probably by the end of the month, because I need the beds for the stuff. There's three beds of garlic there. Uh, obviously the bigger one's the elephant garlic. So actually in the, on the trellis, I don't know if you can see, but the clematis is starting to, to pick up now on both sides. So this is a, a white clematis and it is starting to actually go. Let me see the sun, no mind, over the top. Roses are picking up. And again, down the bottom, we've got some uh, climbing beans this time. I think we've got purple climbing beans in traditional. Uh, green climbing beans. A couple of dahlias, three dahlias in, in buckets there. Here yeah, we just brought out overwintered and the start of sprouts will come out of the greenhouse. And they're setting the peas early on, what I think they are. And again, some more uh, climbing beans. Uh, dwarf French beans, they are. So yeah, shallots are picking up. These are golden gourmet shallots, and then we've got stew run 
onions in there. They were from sets. So yeah, I was on about the potatoes. I don't know if you can see for the light, but these buckets here were the ones that was in the greenhouse, which were Erica's little Welsh garden potatoes. I think they were King Edward's from Lidl's bought at Christmas. The idea is he bought one and a half kilos uh, of Christmas spuds and planted them to see what you'll get. As you can see, I haven't got anything in these buckets. There is a couple have come up in these ones, but probably less than 50% germination. Uh, and they didn't really produce chits. Now, whether they've been, I don't know, threat to, uh, to keep them fresh, so they last till Christmas or what, I don't know, and that's retarded them producing, but yeah, not a great deal. I'm not expecting anything really from them. Um, but you see these these are the currants that were transplanted from the fruit cage uh, they're doing well putting on lots of new shoots I'll probably cut this one back a bit harder next year but they are this one was a, a full big bush that I hadn't cut so it it's got a few fruit but these ones down here I don't know if you can see in there that, that's just a stump there which I cut back so all this top growth is fresh this year and um, similar with these, you know, I just cut them back to, to stumps basically. Uh, and you can see they've all sprouted from the bottom and the odd one sort of on the stump. So it just shows you, you know, how how brutal uh, you can be sometimes and, and things if they want to grow, they will grow. Right, I'm going to go and tackle the greenhouse over there with the, um, I don't know if you can see it, but the glass is fully covered by the grape so i need to reduce the grape by at least a half so i'll show you how to do that so this is the the middle greenhouse now as it is um, and this is one with the grape in it uh grapevine and as you can see it's totally taken over but what i wanted it to do was to, to start and set its fruit which you can see it has started to set its fruit but what i'm going to do now is reduce all of the foliage right back down at least by half so what I'll do, I don't know if you can see along. Um, try and find a stem that's easy for you to see. So what I'll do, I'll have one that's that's fruiting. I'll miss a spur, so I'll rub them out, and then I'll leave that one there. So I'll reduce everything by half, and then when I get to the fruit, I'm going to reduce the fruit down as well. So I'll set you up on the tripod and show you what I'm doing. All right, guys. So I know I set this greenhouse out. Uh, till very last, it's been last what I do, purely because of the grapevines. What I want to do is, is get these trained, uh, get them under control. As you can see, this is going from, from left to right, and I, I don't want that. I want these, these taken out. Uh, but what I want to do is get the, some of the fruit established before I do that. So this is always the last thing to do. Uh, I'll strip it out, identify the fruit that I want to keep. Um, so I'll reduce all the foliage by half. I'll reduce all the, the fruit by half, uh, just leaving. So I don't know if you can see, for example, that's that's where a set of fruit is. I will cut off anything past that. So I don't need any of that. But that probably is, if you look at this, fruit further closer to the vine. I want to leave it fairly close to the vine, not not sticking out six inches. So I'll, I'll reduce that fruit. Once I've cleared it out, I'll um, I'll show you again about reducing the fruit. Right, so what we want to try and do uh, in here, there's um, four main leaders of vines coming up from the from the ground outside, and they're going across the the, um, the right hand side of the greenhouse, uh, and I, I, all I want to keep is those four. I don't want any of these going away to produce more leaders. Um, so if I start from from the end, um, all I'll do, this is the first first one with fruit. I'll leave that on, I'll wipe out everything that's in the second, just take it out completely. Normally you can just snap them off, but if they are a bit stubborn, there's always the second turn. Like that one. So, Again, that's the first one. I've rubbed out 
The second spur, this spur, I will leave to fruit, but I don't want lots on it. So, don't know if you can see there, but there's one spur left with the fruit on. It's got two sets of fruit. All I want is the one. So I will leave that one on. Same with this one, the first one. That should come off because got one set of fruit there on the first spur. Miss a spur, wipe it out. Fruit on the second spur. So all I'm going to do is take all of these out all the way along. So I need to wipe out this spur because I've got fruit there. And you can see how brutal I'm being. I'm, I'm literally taking it out, out by half. So that's the next spur. I identify my fruit, which is there. So I'll take that off just to remove the fruit. And I'm just going to follow this all the way along. Same on this one. I'll, I'll, I'll work it all the way along. So that's my first fruit and spur, which I'll leave. But I can take the leaves off beyond the fruit. Because what I want to do now is concentrate on actually getting um, getting decent fruit, not loads of little little fruit. So first spur is fruiting. Second spur we're going to wipe out. We'll fruit on this spur again. So identify if there's any fruit on it. There is, which is there. So I'm going to take everything off past that. Okay, so if you just follow my principle, one spur with fruit, one without, one spur with fruit, and just work your way right along. So this, this whole spur should have no fruit on it. I'm going to take all of that out. Right, I'm going to crack on and uh, we should get through it in a, a few few minutes. Um, and I'll come back and show you what I've done. Catch us in a bit. Right guys, I hope you can see how much I've thinned it down well by half. And I don't know if you can see what I was meaning, but I've got one fruit and spur here. I'll miss a spur, take a fruit and spur, but I only want one set of grapes per fruit and spur, because obviously there was more coming out here. So one, one there, took out this spur here. Next one, it's got one set of grapes. Left a little bit around the back here, obviously you don't want them grown down the backs of things so i tend to take anything grown backwards down and then go on my next set so this has got one set of grapes on there this is spur come back to my next spur one set of grapes i do that all the way along so fruit and spur one set of grapes this is spur one set of grapes. Yeah, I'm gonna do that all the way along, both sides. This side isn't as mature as the other side, uh, but again, I've got Mrs. Spur, Fruit and Spur. There's a spur behind there, Mrs. Spur. Mrs. Spur, Fruit and Spur, all the way along, yeah. And I will probably reduce the, the grapes down a little bit more um, just to get um, so, some bigger grapes. You don't want um, loads of tiny little grapes because they'll not mature. Uh, and you want to try and keep keep the leaves down now uh, as well so that the grapes can get um, get as much sun as possible. So I don't know if you can see on the ground, you can see how much I've taken off. Hence why I don't do this when my tomato plants are in. I just kind of get get to it uh, when the tomatoes are in so I always do this first and then put my tomatoes in so that'll be next weekend I'll just leave the vines to dry out a little bit 
um, and then I'll uh, I'll uh, pop them in the compost. Right, guys, I hope you understood uh, what I was doing in the in the greenhouse there with the grapes, and I uh, hope I give you a little few tips um, to have some successful grape crops. So I'm gonna uh, thin out the uh, tree branches in the apple trees in the um, in the big greenhouse. Now I'm gonna take a few of them off. Okay, dog. See you in a bit. Right guys, that's the uh, the apple tree um, sort of pruned back. I wouldn't normally um, prune an apple tree back that hard um, in the middle of, you know, beginning of summer. Um, you do do a bit of summer pruning, but uh, a, a little bit later. Um, but yeah, it's because it's in the greenhouse uh, and I cannot have it grown too big because it'll just end up coming up and over the roof and stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm keeping the train back. I'll keep it... Um, to the to the main leaders uh, it is espaliered anyway so i just want to keep it to those main espaliers and keep them quite short stumps off off those main leaders um and say it, i've only spotted one apple that's taken uh, this year uh, but that's not surprising really uh, i had to pollinate them myself um and i did did it a little bit late um by next year i will have uh, the end the end um door will be sort of a mesh door built so we will be able to get the pollinators in and i'll have the windows open a little bit earlier uh, but yeah so that's the apple tree done i'm now going to tie up um these raspberry canes right let's crack on right guys that's me signing off for today i've got the raspberry canes there uh, done let's see for the sun That's all the raspberry canes tied in. And that's me done for the day. See you later.